If you had invested in Citigroup in March of 2009, you would have quadrupled your money in six months. But if you had listened to this guy, Bear Stearns is fine. Do not take your money out. Well, NYCB New York Community Bank Corp is in a crisis. Will it be a Bear Stearns? or a city group. This is what we are going to find out in today's video and we are also going to understand the implications of this crisis. If it is going to be contagious and affect the rest of the banking industry and also the economy and the stock market. Because in 2008, there was a contagion, the whole market crashed, there was a 50% crash in the market. While last year we had a banking crisis and only three banks failed. Among these three banks of course were Signature Bank which was acquired by NYCB. So that's why it is important to understand how NYCB got here. Let's say you go to the bank today, you deposit $100. The bank can lend this money to other people, but they can't lend much more than $100. Usually there is a certain capital requirement that the bank is required to keep. Let's say it's a 10%. If another person goes to the bank and asks for a $200 loan, the bank can lend them that $200 as long as they have $20 in capital. So they are saving that $20. Banks make money through spread. When you deposit your money in the bank, in a way you are lending the bank money at a certain interest rate. And then when they lend that money to someone else, they lend it at another interest rate. And the difference is the spread. That's how banks make money. Following the 2008 financial crisis, interest rates have been quite low and there have been New regulations on bank from the Dodd Frank Act of 2011. Capital requirements also increased. So it became harder and harder for banks to make money the usual way through spread. So they had to look for alternative investments. Instead of just lending money to people, instead of just lending money to the US government through government bonds, they were looking for alternate investments. And one of such alternative investments at the time was real estate. In 2008, this whole sector, real estate sector crashed. So there were a lot of opportunities in the market and the banks decided to invest in real estate, especially in commercial real estate, because the economy was booming with a low interest rate. Another interesting thing that happened with low interest rates, it meant that there was a lot of free money. So many people were interested to buy a new house and then the pandemic hit in 2020. This led to a crash in commercial real estate because all these offices, all these buildings, commercial buildings were not operational for months. And also in some cities, rent control was implemented. Let's say you bought an apartment building and you were renting it to people. Now, because of this rent control, you cannot charge as much as you would want. And of course, your bill to the bank, the interest you're paying is increasing, but you are not able to charge more in rent. So it is likely that you're going to default on your debt. If you default on your debt, the bank also is going to suffer. If you look at the loan portfolio of NYCB, you would see that there is a lot of commercial real estate loans. There's also a lot of apartment building, especially in New York City. It is a very concentrated portfolio. But this is not the main reason why the bank is in trouble today. Actually, after the pandemic, there was a fast recovery because the government intervened, interest rates were cut, there was a lot of quantitative easing, a lot of free money was given. So the whole industry eventually recovered. So with more free money, these banks, what they did was to use that money to invest more, expecting that eventually the industry would recover. But this did not happen. In parallel, the Federal Reserve System was rising interest rates to fight inflation. And with rising interest rates, many of these banks had bonds on their portfolio. They were losing money on the bonds. So these were unrealized gains. But in order for them to meet liquidity requirements in the short term, they had to sell these bonds at a loss and buy other bonds at higher prices. And these are realized losses. So that's why free banks failed last year. First Republic was acquired by JP Morgan Chase. First Citizens acquired Silicon Valley Bank, while NYCB acquired Signature Bank. But still not the main reason why the bank is in trouble today. What happened in 2022 was that NYCB acquired Flagstar Bank. And with this additional acquisition of Signature Bank, their assets rose to over 100 billion US dollars. And when a bank has more than 100 billion US dollars in assets, it is considered a category four bank. And there are more capital requirements, more liquidity requirements for these banks. Actually, the fractional banking requirements for all banks are not the same. For the smaller banks, you can see 7%. Once over the big banks, you can see 13%. So it also increases the Federal Reserve System scrutinizing the bank. 
And this bag and YCB was not prepared for this. It was not prepared to get so big so fast. So what they did was to sell some of their assets, long-term assets, at a loss in order to provide additional liquidity. And this is a realized loss. There were also unrealized losses through provisions for credit losses. So what banks do is that they expect that at some point, people that they have lended money to are going to default on this debt. So they have provisions for credit losses. And usually in uncertain times, the banks are going to increase the provision for credit losses. You look at NYCB, they increase it a lot because there's a lot of uncertainties. They also change the CEO, they change the management of the company. And so far, they haven't filed the 10K form stating that there are material weaknesses in the 10K that they have to work on in order to eventually file it. All these events led to the bank being in the bad situation it is today. But NYCB is nothing like Silicon Valley Bank. And before I tell you why, please make sure to smash the like button so that this video spreads to more people and they know whether to invest in NYCB or not. For Silicon Valley Bank, only 15% of the deposits were insured. In the case of NYCB, this is 72%. Some by the FDIC and others with collaterals. Why this is a good thing is because it is unlikely that there is going to be a run on the banks. So if people go and try to remove their money in the bank, they know that 72% of these people know that they are going to get their money back. In the case of Silicon Valley Bank, you are true. If you are not in the 15%, of course, you would rush to take out your money. They also have 18 billion US dollars in reciprocal deposit capacity. It means they can exchange deposits with other banks in case they need liquidity. So overall, we can say that they have 95% of their deposits insured. So that's why I tell you that it is unlikely that there is going to be a run on this bank. And if you compare it with its peers, in many ways, it is better than the peers. So we should not really be so worried about NYCP. However, we need to admit that things are getting worse for this bank. And also it's important to understand when it comes to banks, fundamentals are not everything. The stock price also matters because if the stock price of a bank falls, depositors are going to take out their money. So a run of the bank can still happen. Even if the bank says the money is safe, a run on the bank can happen. That's why it was so important for them to have a capital injection in the bank. So a group of investors led by former US Secretary of the Treasury, Mnuchin, invested 1 billion US dollars in the bank. I posted the full analysis on the Super Investors Club. If you are interested in this analysis, you can read it there to understand NYCB better. Whether you are a beginner to the stock market or you just want to learn more, you can also find courses on the Super Investors Club. For, for example, to understand banking, it is important to know the metrics to look for in banks. For example, returns on assets is something very important. And in the Super Investors Club, there is a course on how to read financial statements. So what is returns on assets? And it is like a social network where you can chat, you can ask questions, you can post your own analysis if you want. Please check out the Super Investors Club. We have recently launched and you can access it at a special price along with a 10-day free trial. Let's talk a little about the deal that this investor made with the company. They are going to buy common and preferred shares at $2. And they also have the warrant to have more shares at $2.50. If you calculate all the number of shares that will be created and potentially be created, it's around the same as the number of shares today. So they are going to double their number of shares. To calculate the intrinsic value of the company, what I did was to use something a little unconventional usually what we are going to do we are going to look at earnings but i do not want to focus too much on the earnings of the company because it is uncertain rather i focus on the balance sheet banks are usually priced according to their tangible book value so i look at the tangible book value of this company today which is around seven billion us dollars and i added of course the capital injection and i say to myself let's take a big margin of safety how much am I willing to pay for this tangible book value? And I'm paying 40% for it. Why 40%? Because there are so much uncertainties. You don't know what will happen. If interest rates keep rising, maybe the value of these assets are going to go down further. If there is a run on the bank, the value is going to go down even further. So you don't know what is going to happen. 40% of the tangible book value is for me safe. And then, of course, I have to divide it with the number of shares. Not with the current number of shares, but with all the shares that will be created. And based on this, according to me, a good price for NYCB today is around $2.20. 
which is a little above what these investors got. And it seems reasonable. Of course, you cannot get at the same price. You have to pay a premium to these investors because they injected capital directly into the business. So will this be contagious or not? I don't know. Nobody knows. Nobody can tell you whether we'll have a 2008 situation again. I don't think so. The troubles with this bank are limited. But comparing it with the PS, there are many things I don't like with the PS. So probably it's not the only bank that is going to suffer. And for the time being, it's probably safer to just wait on the sideline, not to make any investments in this bank or any of the other regional banks. Warren Buffett is apparently buying a financial company. We don't know which one it is, but I have a few ideas. So please watch this video next. Have a nice day and goodbye.